He was one of those who celebrated the death of the late Nigerian televangelist, Prophet T.B. Joshua, the day after the Nigerian had given up the ghost. He labeled him as the wizard of Endor. Reverend Chris Okuti has come out to justify his dislike for the late Nigerian cleric, saying that T.B. Joshua had equated himself to our Lord Jesus Christ. Joshua took that name because he believes that he is another Jesus. He believes that God sent him to our world to bring reconciliation between God and mankind, exactly the same way the Lord Jesus was sent. And that is why he took that name Joshua. And he's not the first to, 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 to propose such a, a ludicrous concept. Because even Jesu Nyibu did the same thing. He calls himself Emmanuel. And we have the same thing with the entity in Calabar who used to call himself I Am. So Joshua believed that he is another Jesus. That's why he took the name Joshua. Because that's the name that Jesus bore when he was right here on earth. And he took that name to show his equality with the Lord Jesus. Because if he took any other name, then it would appear that he was subservient to Christ. And that is why he bore the name Joshua, so that he would testify to this generation that he is another Jesus. Now, not only did he take the name Joshua, but if you look at his ministry, you would find that his, his church or his ministry is called Synagogue Church of All Nations. Now, he did that deliberately because when Jesus was on earth, there was no church. Jesus walked in a synagogue. And so if he is going to equate himself with Jesus, he has to follow the same pattern. And so he calls his ministry a synagogue because that's where Jesus walked. And if you look at the, the, the progression, when Jesus was on earth, he walked in a synagogue. But after his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, the church came into being in the second chapter of the book of Acts. So now he walks in his church. So look at the concatenation. You have Jesus first in the synagogue and now he's in the church. And Joshua follows the same pattern. First he has synagogue, then the word church. Synagogue, church of all nations. So he can follow the same pattern as the Lord Jesus. Not only that, he takes on to himself the title of the Lord Jesus, Emmanuel. Because in the book of Isaiah, the prophet prophesied that God will show Israel a sign. Because the virgin will give birth and shall call the name of that child Emmanuel, which Matthew interprets to us as God with us. For instance, it's called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. He never bore any of these names. He never answered any of these names, but they were an introduction. It, they were a part of the identification of his real nature, that he is 100% God and 100% man. But Joshua took that name unto himself to claim a measure of deity so he can equate himself with Jesus. And that is why when people come to his church or when a television program is going to be broadcast that has to do with him, the name Emmanuel is first chanted to remind those in that congregation or those who are watching that this one has a measure of deity and equates himself with the Lord Jesus Christ. He warned members of the church against the worshipping of images of the late cleric saying it was not of God. There is a spiritual principle in the Bible that the spirit follows the image. That is why every born again Christian today has the spirit of God living in them. Because for the first time, man now has the image of God through Christ Jesus. And because we are in that image, the spirit of God comes to dwell in us because the spirit follows the image. That is the reason why God would not have you make any graven image unto yourself. An image is just a shell. Whether it is made of wood or made of iron, there is nothing inside of it. But that image attracts a spirit. The spirit of that image goes after that image. And so if you put the image of some deity in your house, the spirit behind that image will come. And if you bow before that image, then you've committed idolatry. It is spiritual adultery. So now Joshua understands that. That is why he gives you his photograph. So when you take his photograph and you put it in your purse or you put it in your bedroom, wherever that you put it, the image attracts the spirit that walks with Joshua and that spirit will visit you and begin to appear to you. Do you understand that? There are some of you 
who are Christians who are not even aware of this principle, and you have the crucifix that you're wearing around your neck, that image is not of God. So be careful, those of you who are wearing this, uh, wearing the crucifix, you must understand that the image that you are bowing to, particularly if you're bowing to that image, is not the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is an image bearing a curse, bearing the judgment. And when you bow to that image, you are bowing to the judgment of God, to the curses, to your sickness, to your diseases, and that is not the image that God expects you to bow to. In fact, you should not bow to any graven image. Reverend Okuti labeled the late Nigerian cleric as a false prophet seeking to justify his point with biblical references. So if he is the true Messiah and the Bible makes it abundantly clear that there are only three men who are going to enter our world, Adam the first, then the last Adam, Jesus Christ, and the Antichrist, then who is Joshua? Who is he? Because he cannot be a Messiah. He doesn't meet any of these patterns. Who is he? What does he represent? We have to answer that question by looking for a pattern in the Bible that testifies of who he is. And so, because if we don't find that pattern, then we cannot identify him. Because Satan... The devil understands that patterns must be established because without patterns, powers cannot flow. So where is the pattern concerning Joshua? We find it in Acts chapter 13. Paul and Barnabas began their first missionary journey and traveling around, they came to an isle called Paphos. In that place was a deputy, that's how it's described, the proconsul of Rome. And the Bible says that that man was with someone that I'm going to describe. Barnabas and Paul discovered that there was some entity that was in the company of this Roman official. Because when you read it in the Bible, it says that he was with the man. And that word is soon in the Greek, which means he was in his company. It's a close relationship. Now the Bible tells us who that man was. That is this man that was with this Roman official. The Bible calls him, number one, a sorcerer. Number two, a false prophet. Number three, a Jew. Number four, Bar Jesus is his name. Remember what I just said. He's called a sorcerer. He's called a false prophet. He is called a Jew. He is called Bar Jesus. Now, let me analyze this for you. You see, the word sorcerer comes from the Greek word magos, which means a magician. So, a better translation would be that this man is a magician, but he carries a Bible around with him and calls himself a prophet, that he is a servant of Almighty God. So, the Bible tells us that he is not, that he is a false prophet. A magician who carries the Bible around, who preaches, who teaches, and claims to be an inspired speaker of the Lord. So he pretends to follow that pattern as a Jew and then calls himself Bar Jesus, which means son of Jesus. Now in the spirit realm, when you say that you are the son of somebody, it doesn't mean that there's some biological procreation that has occurred. It means that you are equal with that person. That's the pattern that Joshua has. He is a magician, a sorcerer, and calls himself a prophet. Notice, he doesn't call himself an apostle. He doesn't call himself a teacher. He doesn't call himself a pastor. Because if he calls himself by any other name outside of a prophet, he does not fulfill the pattern. So he must stick with that <laughs> appellation. He must call himself prophet so so and so. So that's why he stuck with that word, that name, that terminology, that appellation, because it is a prophetic assignment appellation. That's why he had to call himself prophet. So he's a magician who claims to be a prophet, but he's a false prophet and calls himself Joshua to identify with the nation of Israel. 